So we're about to go meet some people to get the base for the void fang vestments and do some alterations. But before then, we wanted to grab a special pizza to share with them. So you guys should recognize Kat as one of our wonderful cosplay partners and her wonderful fiance Colton. We decided to take them to Burnt Hickory Brewery, which one is, is one of our favorite places to meet people. And we brought a pizza, so hopefully everything turned out alright. We're going to go do fittings for our various pieces and paraphernalia. So prototyping the armor for the Void Fang vestments, you can see loosely in the reflection here in this television screen, conveniently placed, the, the trim on the Void Fang vestments needs to be the outside of the chest plate. So I'm going to build something that comes here to here out of thermoplastic, and then I will buy buckles to buckle it and triplicate on either side. I think that that'll be solid. And then if we come over here, we can see Giannis has my guardian up, and if we just bring up the Void Fang vestments and spin it, after I get the chest piece up, I will be building this back panel on the other side, which is almost like body armor for the spine, and so that should be pretty cool. And then the shoulder pieces will be highly intuitive. I'll build those separately, and then if we want to get dangerous, I can cover my chest in saran wrap, and when we finally warble over the foam armor, we can just heat press it into my body so it'll fit nobody else because I am a powerfully skinny individual, as you guys are all too eager to point out in the comment section below. Thanks! So as I have mentioned before in cosplay videos, nothing about this is a perfect science. So I took rough measurements. This is armpit to armpit on me. I used a totally legitimate drumstick to measure that. And then I went um, sternum starting at my belly button all the way up because that seems like about where it is on my guardian. I will create a rough dip like this. I am not using a sextant to do so. I am just kind of drawing orbits until I'm happy that they are roughly symmetrical and then I will melt them into exact symmetry later. So that's a thing. I also use my finger. It's uniform so I could do a joint here and then a joint here and then pull those in until again I was kind of comfortable with it. The lines are thick because that's what I need them to be and then I'm going to bring these in as the void fang has like a V shape where these kind of come in and I'm just going to trace it over here. So if this is that joint it kind of peels in like this and then, see, this is why we prototype, it comes in like this, and then down like this into this kind of base here, which I will make roughly symmetrical before I make my cut, and then that goes up and up. Normally, I would build a pattern and fold it with paper, but I rather would build in real time kind of to my body, because that way when I'm done, it'll fit automatically or automagically, as I like to say, and I think that that'll be really cool. So this front panel will be done very soon. I can add the embellishments to that, and then we'll move on to the back panel, which is going to be tricky, because I can't reach my own back. So finally wound up having to go to paper templating. This is so far the chest piece as it is complete. This was free handed. This is going to be a black panel that shows up when you take the shader off. And then once I make one out of this thin craft foam, I'm going to go ahead and flip it and we should be very close to being very ready for thermoplastic. So as you guys can see here, the front chest piece is fundamentally done. I think that this is very close to what I want. It still obviously needs its thermoplastic cover, but as far as form goes here, very, very close and fitted to my body, so that's excellent. And then this is the starting piece for the back panel, and getting this was a lot of fun. So what we're going to have to do is form this. I'm going to make these bits out of smaller... Um, foam so I'm gonna use like craft foam for this ramp here I'm gonna build the back collar out by cutting in here and here and popping this up and then we'll come in and we'll use a second layer of craft foam to make the little spine pieces and that should be really really cool we'll do the details with paint but I want three levels of raisedness so we've got the main level here I'll add a raised level here and here then a raised level here and then the spine columns on top I see no reason to do any midpoint segments for that I'll just show you what that looks like when the vision is complete chest and back pieces ready for thermoplastic captain Quick segment on the back piece here. So I've gotten the shape and form that I really want. I think it looks a lot like 
what I'm going for here with the back collar support and the spine armor. I think that it's excellent, exactly what we want. The only issue is it is flat, and my spine has a rather humanoid curve to it. So I'm going to heat it all uniformly, and then Aaron is going to press it into my back, so it'll be an exact fit. Nobody else will be able to wear the armor, but it isn't for anybody else. So should be very, very hot, actually. Going to be very unpleasant. So after creating leather shoulder straps that go around the collar of the trench coat, I've gone ahead and come in, and this is completely warbler coated. I think that it looks excellent, so I'm happy with it. I'm going to add snaps here, 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 and here, where the trench coat will connect to the chest piece, and then I'll come in and add some down here at the tail end, where again, the back panel will connect to the chest piece, and that'll make it so that this armor is kind of integrated without having to be permanently attached to the trench coat, and everything will move fluidly. So we're here at a place called Joanne's Fabric and Crafts, and I, true to form, wore my warlock coat in here just so that I could kind of test fit some things and it looks like this is how I'm going to attach the chest piece to the trench itself so that it kind of works in that sense and I'll do that by embedding the male snaps into the warbler here and then I'll put the female snaps on the back end and it looks like there's even a little pinching applicator to get these things on so this is definitely what we're going to go with to make sure that the two pieces fit flawlessly. So utilizing the cute little applicator, I've got all these snaps on. They have their female sides on the inside, so they will, in fact, snap onto my chest plate once it's painted. But before all of that, I'm going to heat up this warbler enough to get these little teeth for the male adapters to sink in so that we have something to attach to. And I think that by the time that's all said and done, it should be very, very nice. After laying on a black base coat of vinyl dye, I am ready to add a gold enamel. You can see that the Draculina was kind enough to meticulously, over the course of a couple of hours, tape off everything that needs to remain black. And so this looks pretty much ready to go. Combining talons is an excellent way to ensure the highest quality props in any circumstance, but the Draculina is just an incredibly talented traditional paint artist, and so through a combination of blotting and then hand detailing, she is really bringing my antique brass to life and then adding all of the embellishments and details that I didn't already put into place. You can also see that she started here on the spine but isn't quite there yet. So this is my first look at the wow. Oh man. How much time did this take? I spent two long nights in this morning. Well, this is crazy awesome. So, like, the patterning and the detail that's gone into this is incredible. This definitely looks like void fang vestments. For those of you that are wondering why it does not have the trim going up the back, the answer to that is quite simple. I didn't want it to have a slit in the back. I am not as much a fan of the duster as I am the trench coat, and I wanted it to billow about the con. And this captures the design perfectly without having to compromise any of those features. Just really, really great work. Thank you so much. That clock says that this exotic is done with approximately 35, 37 minutes before the convention itself. So I wanted to show this. The cloak obviously hasn't had any alterations made to it, but I ended up using clear warbler strips to warbler shoulder panels onto this. And so now it goes on like hero armor when the Lost Boys are getting all suited up in the movie Hook. And I think that that is really, really cool that that's how this works. So it just literally, I kind of splay it out, the warbler axis shoulder straps, and it just pulls over the top of my body. And then we use these six points of snappage to get it into the trench coat. And it becomes a complete exotic uh, warlock coat, which is just perfect. So transporting it, it's kind of awkward because this is what it looks like when it's not form-fitted to my body. But I'm happy with it. And I think that you guys will agree that in this coming up final segment, it looks pretty much like the one from the game. And here we have Drac at Dragon Con 2015 in his whole awesome Destiny getup with his Void Fang vestments tucked into the cloak, and he is, and it just looks so awesome. He is dual wielding uh, Teamer's Lash, which is a very awesome gun blaster, and <laughs> and I can't remember Last that one. Word. Last word. Which we made for Momocon. 
but it still works. Hey guys, it's Drak. I just wanted to share with you, I guess, the room view. This is actually a room up view. But I thought that it would be really interesting. I love how they put the Dragon Con symbol up here. I thought it would be a good way to end the Void Fang Vestiments video. It's the most complicated piece of cosplay I've made in a very long time, and I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thanks for watching. I really, truly mean that. None of this is possible without you guys' support and viewership and subscriptions and all of that good stuff, and it means a lot to me. So thank you for that, and I hope you liked it. It's a, a fun piece overall.